Welcome to Book Trip Live, a Merrill Moss Media production. Today we are thrilled to have Deanna Reasonover here with us today. Uh, she stars in the new comedy series Clipped on TBS. Um, right now we are having a little bit of tough technical difficulties, so let me just get her back on here. Never a dull moment, right guys? All right, so let's see if we can get her back on. Um, Let's see. Are you able to see me? Can you refresh your page? Thank you. All right. Let's see. If you're able to see me, um, huh. I can't see her, so that's not a good thing. But in the meantime, you can head on over to booktrib.com. Um, you can enter to win giveaways, check out our latest live chats, all that good stuff. Um, hopefully we can get Deanna back on screen. Um, the wonderful world of the web just doesn't want to cooperate with us today. Uh, let's see. Um, Deanna, if you can hear me, can you refresh your page so that we can try to get you back on screen? Let's see. Hmm. One second, guys. Bear with me. All right, so I am back. I do not see her. Let's try this again. Hmm. Well, guys, if you're here, I hope you're submitting questions while we work this out. On a Friday, right? We can't have an easy day. Hmm. Technical difficulties, please hold. All right, while we're waiting, we can check out, um, there's a trailer of Clipped on the Booktrib page. I think that would be a good look. All right, we're still not getting any feed from Diana, which is unfortunate because we have some great questions here today to ask her. Hopefully we can get this up and running. If not, we might need to reschedule. Let's see. Hmm. Of course. Of course. All right, guys. I don't want to bore you with my face. Cause you're all here to see Diana, aren't you? All right, let's see. Hey Diana, are you able to hear me at all? Can you see me? If you can see me, you can give the all physical so we can kind of work this out. I think maybe this is you on the phone right now. Hold on guys, okay, bear with us. We'll be right back, don't go anywhere.
back on. Hopefully there's me. All right, guys, we are back on. Hey! Yay. Okay. So there we go. Wonderful. All right. We're going to hang up the phone. We're going to make this happen. All, All right. right. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, guys. guys. Right. Technology is so much fun. It is it's so fun. much fun. It's really a comedy, so it's great. <laughs> Right? I mean, we had to make the people wait. We had to have them stick around to, for you to come. So thank yeah. you for joining us. Well, you know, I had a, uh, I guess I had a very Hollywood entrance, you could say. Right? Like, you had to be yeah. fashionably late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so to kind of get started, um, can you just, you know, tell us a little bit about Clipped and the character that you play on the show? Uh, yeah. Uh, Clipped is a sitcom, a multi-cam sitcom set in a barbershop in Boston. The guys who created it also created Will and Gray, so there's a little legacy there. Side note, um, the guy who plays Jack and the woman who plays Karen have never been on set, so if anybody knows them personally, please let me know that. I'd love to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's about a group of friends, uh, or actually about a group of co-workers who all work in the workshop who were really friends in high school, but now are stuck working together and are kind of trying to navigate their lives and their dreams. Got George Wyatt from Cheers. It's got Ashley Tisdale from High School Musical. It's got me from Live Chat at Book Triv. Hey. <laughs> hey, yo. So and now. My bookcase, one of my bookcases is actually right behind me next to that dress form. That's where I keep all my oh. books about acting. Look at that. It's separated into sections. I like, I like order when it comes to a good book. Well, that's good. I mean, sometimes chaos is not always preferable in terms of that. Um, so we have a bunch of viewer questions, so we can kind of just dive right in since we made them wait. Um, let's yeah. see. Do, do, do. All right. So this person asks, who in the comedy world or entertainment world in general do you look up to or draw inspiration from? Uh, so easy, and I love this question. Uh, it would absolutely be Whoopi Goldberg. I've been told so many times I look like her. Uh, which is frustrating because when you're a black woman, you kind of want to be told you look like Halle Berry, but it never happened. <laughs> I feel like rats. I know. I'm like, uh, okay, sweet. Whoopi Goldberg looks like she hasn't worn a bra since 1972, but whatever. I'll take it. Um, like, I hope my bank account. Yeah, I'll take it. I hope my bank account looks like hers one day. She's gone off into that like crazy pants world with the view and everything, but comedy wise, mm -hmm. like sister got it. She got in. Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. She got the famous EGOT. So if I could get right, that. Somebody you want to follow for sure. And there actually is a question yeah. here that has to do with Whoopi Goldberg. Um, Kate oh. says, I've seen some of your impressions. Your Whoopi Goldberg is the best. Can you do ah. any for us here today? Uh, my favorite, this is so dumb. I think this joke is so funny. My friends are all like, this isn't funny at all. Uh, I like to do Macy Gray. My girlfriend is sitting on the couch looking at me like, don't do that. Again. No, like, don't do it. <laughs> I like to do Macy Gray. No, you Gray. have to do it. Well, I assume that she just doesn't, like, I can never understand she's saying anything she's saying. Like, I just assume that she's always like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. and that's just how she talks all the time. I think it's very <laughs> funny to imagine Macy Gray just sounding like she swallowed an entire pack of lit cigarettes. <laughs> That's awesome. And now um, Kate says, uh, what do you think Whoopi Goldberg would say if she saw your impersonation of her? Yikes! Uh, <laughs> given, given the way that she's been reacting to things on The View, I feel like she would not be pleased. She'd be like, that no. is, she'd absolutely tell me that that is not what she sounds like, that that is inaccurate, and that she and Joy Bear have a very close relationship. So uh, now... In my impression of Whoopi Goldberg, for everyone who hasn't seen it, I always, yes, I just want to talk about how Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Bear like are constantly butting heads and fighting. Uh, that's what I imagine is going on backstage at the View. Joy Bear is a real close talker, and Whoopi Goldberg has just had it. She's sick of it. She's like, oh, no, I think I'm done with this. Um, so yeah. we have a really interesting question from Eliza. She said, if you wrote a book about your life, what genre would you categorize it as? Uh, oh, what genre would I categorize that as? Uh, is is there a uh, is there a genre called jackass comedy? Is that like a genre? Because I think that's the there should be. Label. I think so. I think the Dewey Decimal System has that. 
Jackass comedy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're a little bit of an you're just a little bit of an asshole, just enough so that it's interesting, right. but not enough that you push all your friends and family away. That's it. That's awesome. Um, now, Leah says, I love your tweets. Uh, you tweeted out that you were going to start calling yourself the Tracy Chapman of comedy. Has that name stuck yet? <laughs> uh, my, my girlfriend, once again, had a very, she's looking at me like, stop putting me in this live chat. You, you want to wait? Oh, she's you, Yeah, you need to, she needs to be in it. Come on. She literally just ran out the front door. <laughs> she would Aww. rather... I run, she would rather run out the front door than me put her on screen right now. Um, Why? No, she, she, she's, you know, in front know, of the camera. She, I know. Yeah, she's an actress herself, but she's not having it. You can meet my cat, Warner. Um, oh, we love she, pets. We love oh, pets. So come on. My brand new six-week-old kitten, Warner. Aww. She's a little cutie. She, hey, look in the camera. Okay. Well, she's never going to be a she's stage like, pet. No. Uh, it, tra the Tracy Chapman of comedy has not stuck. I think the twists are helping right now, but nobody wants to call me that. <laughs> no matter how much like, I say it, no one wants to call me that. Self-proclaimed. You'll just call it call it yourself. Um, I, so, it's Natalie... Like, it's like a secret. You have to declare what you want. That's true, right? You have to just go for it, and hopefully someone somewhere will make it stick. So now Natalie says you're no stranger to improv, which I'm sure she means improv, um, or the stage. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the difference between theater and shooting for TV? Yeah, I'm super lucky in that my first big thing is actually multicam, uh, which is a lot like theater because it's done in front of a live studio audience. So when you're mm -hmm. watching the show and you hear all that laughter, that's not a laugh track. It's literally, that's the audience. And they are real loud and real vocal. and you have people like standing up and cheering. So it's more like stadium rock in a way. But um, I think the only difference is you really have to, whereas in, with improv, you're sort of just trusting your partner and trusting yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. With TV, you've got all this other team of people surrounding you to trust. So your net, your safety net becomes a lot bigger. But in terms of performing and in terms of like intentions and what I'm trying to bring to the role is the same thing for me. Oh, definitely. And now kind of talking about like the cast dynamic and just, you know, the people on set, um, Kate wants to know what would you say is the best thing about being on clipped on the clip set? I would imagine you guys are able to have lots of fun. We are. Oh, it's ridiculous. Ryan Pinkson, who plays Ben, was on Punked. Which is, mm -hmm, yeah, it sounds great until you realize that what he's doing is he's trying to punk all of us all of the time. All he <laughs> wants to do is prank us. It's so frustrating. Uh, I also like to prank people, but I'm terrible at it. Just horrible. <laughs> like, what usually happens is I hide somewhere totally obvious where people can see me. Like, they can see my hair or my feet sticking out. And then I'm just like, Diana, And I look up and I stand <laughs> stare at them awkwardly for 10 seconds and then I just scream in their face. Um, <laughs> not good at, I'm not good at pranks. But that's the fun part. That's the funnest part is that we're all such friends. We're all just trying to like crack each other up or make each other break. We call that breaking when you uh, are on set and you laugh when you're not supposed to. So. Mm. so now Chase wants to know, how similar are you to your character Charmaine on the series Clipped? I am not nearly as cool, as organized, or as well-dressed. Uh, <laughs> Charmaine is really no no nonsense, very dry. As you can see, I'm super silly, and uh, uh, I would dare to say friendly as opposed to Charmaine. I don't think I would let Charmaine cut my hair. Like I no. feel like you would no, you would tell her what haircut you wanted, and she would give you whatever thought would suit your face best, even if it's not what you asked for. Not what you wanted at all. Yeah, I didn't ask for a bob, Charmaine. Okay. Um, so now Kristen wants to know, if you could star on any show currently on air, what would it be and who would you want to play? Grey's Anatomy, Grey's Anatomy, so much Grey's Anatomy. Um, they are always, I don't know where they get those cases from, but it's always somebody has like a flesh-eating virus or they managed to get something stuck in their body. Like there was a guy, <laughs> was a guy who had an entire like tree trunk, like just stuck in him or like this woman who had been eating so much fur so much of her own hair she had like a fur ball that was like the size of a baby <laughs> i want to 
want to see and what that they would, would come you, up with. And now would you want to be like kind of like a new doctor or would you want to be like a patient that came in with one of these crazy ailments? No, ma'am. I want to be one of them crazy old patients. And they always have the worst excuses, too. Like that one with the hair is like, I don't know. I just got nervous and it's just my nervous condition. I'm like, what? How do you have that much hair on your head that you gave yourself a baby? You gave yourself a hair baby. Why do you do that? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Leah wants you to describe each of your co-stars in three words or less. Ah, this is a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Um, uh, George, I can cuss on this, right? Can I cuss? Yeah. Of course. We, 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 we welcome that. Great. Uh, so George went, fuck it all. Uh, Mike Castle, skinny, goofy uh, thinker. Uh, Ryan Pinkston, Franking Jigglypuff. <laughs> Do not tell Ryan Pinkston that I just compared him to a Pokemon. Um, Do not. Ashley, Ashley Tisdale. Uh, sweet, funny, smart. Uh, Lauren Lapkus. Hilarious, uh, talented character. Uh, who's left? Mo. Uh, Mo, who's played by Matt Cook. Uh, Mo. So insanely talented. And then is that is that everybody? Is that everybody? Oh, uh, even though he's not like necessary, he's only a guest star. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and describe Roger Bell Johnson, who was Carl Winslow on Family Matters with Always mm -hmm. a Cop. Yeah, that's <laughs> how I describe him. Always a cop. That's my three words for him. That's awesome. Those are great descriptions. All right, so we have another question do you watch the episodes each week with cast and friends what's it like seeing yourself on screen are you critical no nah, i'm like i'm on i'm on screen y'all <laughs> i am not critical <laughs> i know there's some people i'm i'm not just checking my phone i'm actually trying to pull up a picture we all watch the episodes together here's a picture this is going to be so tiny because it's on my phone but here's a picture of us all just, just, at, just put it real close yeah here's a picture of us all at my place um, watching it. You can't see that, but uh, some people from Brazil, like a bunch of people from Brazil sent us uh, a picture that was like, we love clips. So we took a picture that said, thank you, Brazil, and sent it to them. Um, but I'm so excited to be on screen. I'm so hood, too. I'm like, ah, champagne, popping bottles. All I do is win. Ah. I'm like a Drake music <laughs> video when I'm on screen. I got no shame. If that wasn't the perfect Emmy winning take, I don't care. All I care about seeing is seeing my face in that little box. You're like, I'm just going with this. Um, okay, so it says, since you also write, do you have any current projects in the hopper? Any shorts or work we can look forward to? That's from Chase. Hey, Chase. Uh, I have a lot of good friends from Chase. Uh, once again, <laughs> my girlfriend is just staring at me. She's looking at me like, yeah. Tell her she cannot make any type of judgment if she's not going to get in front of the camera and talk Ooh, to us. So there you're you getting go. told off. You're getting told off here. She's laughing. <laughs> she's not coming on camera. Um, oh, man. I got to work just, on it. I'm going to work on it. She's a little lesbarian. Um, <laughs> I, I do write. I'm, uh, I'm looking at producing some stuff this fall. I actually, this is, I'm working on with my writing partner. Um, a web series that is a, a, a superhero comedy. So Ooh. that is something that people can look out for late in the fall slash early winter. It's LA, so we don't really have seasons. So I'm just taking a wild stab as what season it would be in November because it yes. will probably be 87 degrees. So the hot season, okay. which is yeah, all exactly. the time. <laughs> earthquake season. Um, we have earthquake season, fire season, and I'm stuck in traffic season. Those are our seasons. Yes, traffic is, doesn't look fun out there. I, I um, apologize for that for you guys. Um, okay, so we have, let's see. Oh, oh, I'm doing something wrong right now. So you got your start in Detroit and then moved to LA. Uh, what sparked the move? Did you always know you would you know, have to move out to California to do what you wanted to do? No, I never pictured myself living in LA. Like this, I got into school here. I got uh, into Cal Arts, which just seemed like a really exciting, fun program. That's what got me out here. Cause I was like, I always thought LA was literally like what I saw 
on um, Full House. Like I thought it was just full of Stephanie Tanners and like life lessons. Yeah. So I was never interested. Uh, I also <laughs> thought it was I thought it was that and Baywatch combined. Baywatch was my favorite TV show as a child, like by far. I still know all the words to the theme song. Um, but when I got out here, I was shocked that I actually liked it. It seems logical yeah. to me to live in a place where it doesn't snow. So, yeah, I'm stuck now. You're like, no, eh, I'm not. Oh, yeah, I'm not moving. I finally found a parking spot for my car. So I'm definitely not leaving L.A. <laughs> like, never. And that kind of ties into this question from Susan that said, is there anything about living and performing in Michigan that you miss? I wish I could say that I really performed formed in Michigan. Michigan is great and Detroit right now has a really great improv scene that's sort of blossoming Ooh. this weekend. In fact, if anybody's out there, it's the Detroit Improv Festival. Um, but I wasn't really plugged in to the art scene while I was there. So I wish I could say that I performed more while I was there. And I just, there were opportunities that I just didn't take. So that's, that's my bad. But um, it happens. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I made You're this. Like, I made yeah. this so sad. I know I made this so sad. But my mom, um, has, my mom is an actor, and she is always performing in something. It's crazy. Uh, so that's so she's taking so she's taking full advantage of what Michigan has to offer. Right. She's she's doing it up for you. Um, she's doing okay, it. so we have. Doing it big, Ma. Um, so if you wrote a show that got picked up and you had the pick of the litter for, you know, actors, who would you choose to star in it? Oh, Kristen. Kristen, you're my favorite person. Kristen, this is the best question I've ever been asked. <laughs> Kristen, I'm going to assume that you're a casting director and also an agent and a manager for some big Hollywood names. So I'm going to hold you to this. Um, <laughs> if I could have literally anybody. Morgan Freeman is going to play my boyfriend. Um, not kidding. Morgan Freeman will play my father. Um, I guess my very older, my much older father. I'm terrible. Uh, okay, here, now you're going to learn the truth about me, which is that I am terrible at casting. I have no sense of anyone's age. I think Rachel Ray and I are the same age, are pretty much the same person because I relate to her so much. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, I would definitely want people like Morgan Freeman, but then I want, like, crazy people who don't even really act like T.I. Like, I would love to be on set with T.I. He seems so fun. Am I right? I watch so much trash TV. I love T.I. and <laughs> Tiny. They just seem like fun, like, generally okay people. Uh, mm -hmm. and, then, and then, like, she already has a show, but Issa Rae from Awkward Black Girl is seems so talented and so wonderful. I'm always going to put Lauren Lapkus and Matt Cook in anything I do from Clipped. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a shout out to a bunch of my homies who don't have um, acting roles right now. I'm putting my girlfriend in that bad boy because it's my show and you can't stop me. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm putting everybody in. I'm, I'm putting everybody in. I'm giving shout outs to all the friends, all the homies, and my mom. Y'all, my mom's and an mom. actress. I'm putting my mom in my show. <laughs> and now would she play your mom or would she play like somebody else? No, I think my, I want my mother to play an IT person, like a technical support person, because mm. I think because she's a wonderful person, but she's just like every other mom when it comes to anything relating to computers, which is that she, I, I'm like, just restart the computer. And she just, I will just see her like on the screen because we'll live stream and I'll just see her looking at the screen like, like, she's never started a computer before. I'm like, like you started hmm, it to get into this mess. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know you know how to turn it on, because you turned it on to get into this mess. So, I don't know. That's great. All right, so I've got a question from Frankie. Um, they ask, do you have any embarrassing audition stories? Ooh, yes, I have, I have all of the embarrassing audition stories. Um, <laughs> I had an audition for a McDonald's commercial and I was super excited and it was my first like big commercial audition where it wasn't going to be shot in somebody's basement and paying me five dollars. So I told my mom and my mother's response was one to tell all my aunts and uncles and everybody that I had already gotten cast in a McDonald's commercial 
and two, to DVR every McDonald's commercial she could find in the hopes of finding me, even though I was like, the audition isn't until tomorrow, so I don't know why you're doing this today. Um, <laughs> and the, in the commercial, I was supposed to hold up a chicken sandwich. I was supposed to do hold up a chicken sandwich and talk about it. Um, and when I got in the room, this is how commercial auditions are. They give you this script sometimes if there's a lot of words, but then when you get in there, there's this whole other thing to be done where you're like, uh, where they're like, all right, uh, you're going to come in, you're going to slate your name, you're going to look to the camera, you're going to say that first line, you're going to sit in this chair, say, the, say that second paragraph about how wonderful the sauce is, cross the room, hit this mark, hold this broom, hold, talk about the chicken sandwich, take a bite, and then say, mm, McDonald's, right? And I was like, <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, it was so fast. The guy's just like so sick of hearing people say this. Uh, and when you're at commercial auditions, there's literally, it's literally a room full of people who look exactly like you. So I was like, all right, okay, I got this, I got this. The producers come in because they want to see it. And this very rarely happens in an initial audition. But the, uh, one of the women was like, I know you. I brought you in specifically because you were like, I, I saw you perform at Second City and I thought you'd be great for this. So it was basically her way of being like, don't fuck this up for me. <laughs> Which I immediately was like, well, now this audition is ruined. Here's what happened. Yeah. I walked I walked in, said my name incorrectly, tried to sit in the chair, knocked the chair over, knocked the sandwich over, reached, reached down to pick up the sandwich, dropped the damn chicken all over the floor, took a bite and just said, McDonald's, and looked in the, com and looked in the camera <laughs> like an idiot. Like doing none of the things I was supposed to do, saying none of the things I was supposed to say. And that woman looked at me with like the disappointed eyes that only a mother can give you. Like it was as if I had told her like, mom, I'm never going to college and I hate school and I'm never giving you grandkids. It was like I had told her all that. So that was terrible. <laughs> and I did not get, um, I did not get that commercial. <laughs> Oh man, you didn't. I I was I thought you did. Yeah, I thought I did too. I thought I really nailed it. I'm gonna tell you, I walked out of that room with my head held high. Nope. I took a commercial so class. You gotta right do, though. Yeah, I guess <laughs> you gotta lie to yourself. Right, I know. So Susan wants to know what are three things that you can never leave home without. Let's see what's in the purse. Number one is my cell phone. I always gotta have this little baddie. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two is a can of alkaloids. I think they're very important for, for life and for being sociable. Uh, and number three is, let's see what else is in here that I absolutely have to have. Oh, it's not in here, but uh, some type of lip balm. I'm a lip gloss or lip balm addict. As you see, I have full lips, so there's a lot of real estate to cover here. So I got to make sure that I got like, usually I have like two packs of lip gloss or lip balm in here. I'm like little mama. Little Mama wrote that song, Lip Lock, about me. Right. Guys, <laughs> I'm Little Mama's muse. I'm more of a chapstick kind of person, but it's okay. We can be friends. Uh, what? Really? Chapstick? What flavor? Um, original. <laughs> you said that like I was going to tease you about that. Original is a great flavor. There's a reason it's original. <laughs> that's true. I mean, if I say cherry, I mean, that's kind of stereotypical. So I'm like, eh, no. Original. Well, listen, you're, I'll, I'll you're be not classic. Carrie. Yeah, don't don't be Katy Perry. Don't pick Cherry. It's terrible. I'm classic. You um, did it. <laughs> I did it. All right, so I got a question for you from Frankie. He says, "Any shows that you're currently binge watching on Netflix?" That's the thing. Uh, I'm just getting started on Sense Eight. It's so good. Ooh. I didn't expect it to be good. Have you seen it? No. No, I Frankie. hear I'm hearing mixed reviews, so I'm a little I'm a little hesitant. So I hope um I hope it's good when I do start it. It is good. I mean, I sort of had to like let go of a lot of expectation. You know, like I feel like if you can come to things and be like, all right, let's see what you got, uh, and not come to it with expectations, it's great. I love yeah. um uh, I love Orange Is the New Black. Uh, I watch Grace and Frankie. I don't binge watch it, but I watch it. You know what I mean? I'm all I'm always a I can do a little Lily Tomlin. I'm fine with that. You can hang, you know. I can hang. And then let's just be honest with ourselves because I picked three shows that are pretty acceptable to be watching. I watch a bunch of crap. I watch 
Sweaty Velocity, Cake Boss, love it. Yeah. A bunch of it yeah. on there. I want, my girlfriend is looking at me. It's not on Netflix. I guess it is. <laughs> Can you hear her yelling at me? She's like, you better tell them. That, she's like, you better tell them that you watched Say Yes to the Jazz. Guys, I've seen every episode of Say Yes to the Jazz. I watched Say Yes to the Jazz original. I watched Atlanta. I watched Big and Beautiful. I watched Say Yes to the Jazz Bridesmaids. I watched Say Yes to the Dress. Randy knows best. I love <laughs> Say Yes to the Dress because it's it's per it's the perfect show, you guys. If you're like busy like me, if you leave the room or you go and practice for your audition. When you come back, that woman is still going to be looking for a white dress. You don't, you never, <laughs> you're never behind the time. You're always ahead of the game. I know what's going on. Everybody's always happy. Nobody's ever like, like um, yeah, it's great. I love it. <laughs> she made me say that. She made me. <laughs> um, so now we, we're going to throw back a little bit to the clipped um, days, which is current, but we're just getting off topic now. Um, so now what was the audition process like for Clipped and did you prepare for that role at all? Like what did you do? Yeah. Did you so cut I people's mean, hair? Please don't tell me you cut people's yeah, hair because that would be I a big Well I just ran up to people and I was like can I cut your hair and didn't wait for them to answer and just sniffed it. Um, <laughs> no I did not do that. That's assault. I did not commit assault. Um, that is assault. Yeah I'm, <laughs> that's a felt. That might be felony assault in fact. Um, Maybe. I uh, actually had to self-tape. I taped myself um, reading the slides for Charmaine. And then they brought me in and I did like the uh, producer session and the network test and the uh, studio test. And it was, uh, it was interesting because when we first did it, they had, we were all Duke. They had, they wanted everybody to audition with a Boston accent. My Boston accent is probably about as good as Donald Trump's, i.e. it's terrible, because everything he does is terrible. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, and um, I, bet, I hope Donald Trump is watching this right now. Dude, I'm sorry. Uh, he is. He's a fan of Clipped. <laughs> yeah, he's a huge fan. He was like, watching. I'm taking that show off my DVR. Right? <laughs> uh, he, it was, uh, not he. Uh, the process was nerve-wracking, because I had never really auditioned for, like, a network sitcom like that. So I kind of the whole time thought like, oh, I'm not going to get this. I'm not going to get this. I'm not, I'm not going to get a call back. Then you get a call back. And I just thought that the whole time. And so then when they called and told me that I had booked it, uh, I was honestly shocked. My agent, who is super sweet and super lovely, uh, called me while I was out buying sunglasses for myself because that was my big treat. I was buying myself prescription sunglasses, guys. Uh, <laughs> And he called me and he told me that I had to come to the office to sign some paperwork, which made sense because I had just booked a commercial. Once again, they paid $5 and shot in somebody's basement. And when I got there, he had a, a bottle of champagne and he had my manager on the, on the phone, on speakerphone, and they were both like, congratulations. So it was good. It was great. It was, it was a wonderful process. The casting director, Julie Ashton, is, uh, is an amazing person. And I never felt scared. That was the crazy thing was I never felt scared because I didn't think I was going to get it. <laughs> well, it's actually a great thing. So at least you were not expecting it. And then it was like, yeah. And then you could yeah. pop bottles and have fun and buy sunglasses, lots of them. Before we move on, one more quick thing about the role. Um, I, because I had that Boston, they wanted that Boston accent originally. Uh, I had a friend from Boston, I had sent him the slides and I asked him to send me a, a tape of him saying some words from the script. Mm. Sides, sides just mean part of the script if you don't know that. Um, yeah, of course. And he, my girlfriend's in the room so I'm going to say this very carefully, he's real hot. He's a really hot guy and I don't know why but he did it shirtless. Like he did the video yeah. for me with no shirt. I guess he was just like in his house just chilling. And so I'm like trying to like listen to him talk, but I'm like, uh, <laughs> <really?"> <laughs> yeah. So I, don't, I didn't really learn a Boston accent so much as I did like share with this share with this really hot guy dad. Ah. <laughs> that's it's great. A good now, right? I know that that's the process. That should be the process for everything. Wow, tongue tied today. It's Friday. <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. Um, so we're coming to the end of the chat, and before we kind of conclude, I would be, you know 
stoned to death if I didn't ask you this question. Um, okay. Are you currently reading any good books? I am, actually. Uh, I finished Middlesex, which I was rereading. Um, I love Ursula Le Guin. I absolutely love her. I love Zora Neale Hurston and Audre Lorde. Um, right now, in terms of reading, I'm doing a lot of like boring actor reading. So uh, I love reading biographies. Let's see what's on the bookshelf. I don't know if this Yes, please take gonna, us to the bookshelf. I don't know if this computer's going to reach. You're just seeing my, um, my acting bookshelf right now. But I read, I read uh, Rachel Dratch, um, Girl Walks Into a Bar, not too long ago. Which is uh, a real, it was really nice to see a little bit into the process of Saturday Night Live. This is my favorite book. This is my favorite like acting uh, autobiography that I've ever read. It's Kathy Griffin's novel, Official Book Club Selection. Let me just open it up Ooh. to. I took the jacket off for some reason. It's a really cute jacket. It's a really cute jacket actually. But I'm reading that, and it's you guys. It's fabulous. <laughs> I've got Fun Home over here, which is great because I went to Oberlin College. Um, and I also have, oh man, this is going to be, I'm going to be stoned to death when I say this. I also have Tracy Morgan, I Am the New Black, which I read, but I sort of yeah. feel like he didn't write so much as he spoke into a tape recorder and had somebody transcribe that for him. Probably. So that's what's on my bookshelf right now. Those are all my boring acting books. Read Official that's Book awesome Club now. Selection, though. Official Book Club Selection by Kathy Griffin is really good. Ooh. Well, thanks so much for the recommendations. I know that a lot of people here are probably curious uh, to know. And also, I want to thank you for joining us. I know we had a little technical difficulties at the beginning, but that is life. So we will just press on. Um, and we can catch Clipped on TBS on Tuesdays at 10. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I'm putting that out yes, correctly. Yes, that is correct. Correct. Tuesday Wonderful. at 10 p.m. And guys, Wonderful. remember. And oh, wait. Can I point out one more thing? Yes, of course. You know Go what, for it. What literature this is from? Anybody know? Anybody? In. Anybody? Three, two, one. I'll say it. It's from The Outsiders. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay gold. Yay! I was. This was my drum roll. I wasn't like trying to do anything strange. No, I thought. It, I thought it was a drum roll. It was a very good. It was a djembe. You're playing the hand drums, the African hand drums. It's good. I try. You know. Um, but thank you so much again. This has been wonderful, and hopefully we can have you on uh, sometime soon. And. Yeah. That's it. Happy Friday, guys. Thank you. Happy Friday. Bye. Bye, guys.